Hello, welcome. Late night kitchen tonight. YouTube after dark. Not really, it's light outside. But it, it's kind, it's kind, <laughs> it's the evening. Have you ever had a dream? Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you but had, it, you, it's kind, you, you it's can, kind, <laughs> today we're going to make canapes. Um, canapé comes from the French word canapé, which means couch. It means like, you know, like that French couch that's from like Louis the 16th court that's like wood with the like brocade fabric and it's ornate and gorgeous. Yes, that. Um, so it's called that because it's like something sitting on top of something else. Like when you sit on a couch. So usually a canapé will have like a base, a topping, and a garnish. A garnish. We're gonna make canapes the easy way. Why? That's weird. Who eats canapes? My dad always calls it horses dovers as a funny joke. Okay, well, I have reasons and here they are. My mom knows that I like like antique uh, vintage kitchenware and stuff. So a number of years ago, she picked this up for me. It's called Shortcuts, canapes the easy way. This one says Phyllis Gordon's shortcuts, canapes the easy way. This one says shortcuts, canapes the easy way. This one seems to be an earlier edition because it's, we're saying Phyllis Gordon, we're name dropping Phyllis Gordon, but it's the exact same book inside, like down to the font. Headquarters needs you to find the difference between these two images. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Basically, it's a thing that lets you like stack stuff of the same shape and then pop it out. So I have this, and so I should probably use this. I tried to research Phyllis Gordon's canapes the easy way. So question one, who is Phyllis Gordon? I don't know. Uh, there was a silent film actress named Phyllis Gordon who died in like 1964. These seem like they're kind of from the 50s, 60s. So maybe she had like a late career in the hors d'oeuvre canapé market. When you look up this contraption, all you find is more eBay listing for those contraptions, and I have read every single one trying to see if anyone had any information on it, and I just couldn't find any mention of this thing. However, like, hors d'oeuvres became a kind of a thing in like the 50s and 60s, and then there was a revival in like the 80s and 90s with like a lot of nouvelle cuisine, I feel like. Um, so like this type of device comes out every now and then. So like if you look up like canapé maker, um, you can find these on YouTube. So what's weird is, and I'm gonna roll the clip, is I found this one that like, they just cut these weird solid jellies out with it. And like, I'm not the only one that is like, what is that jelly? What is that jelly? Other people in the comments are like asking the questions. We need answers. I scaled the, I couldn't find any answers. What is that jelly? Anyways, I don't think you're ready for these sandwiches. Let's begin. So, um, the word canapé and hors d'oeuvre makes us think of costly, exotic, complicated to make delicacies that are usually professionally prepared. <laughs> Shortcuts are here to make your entertaining easy and inexpensive, blah, blah, blah. They will look as if they have been made by a professional caterer. Very important for like 50s performative housewife-ness, you know? So basically you like, oops, oh no. Load this baby up and then put a toothpick in it and then push it out from what I can tell. So my idea is to make like a everlasting gobstopper inspired canapé pineapple. Cause on the cover of this one, we can do like a display with a pineapple, but I want to have like three course meal 
uh, spaghetti, fettuccine, and veal. Three course meal, spaghetti, fettuccine, and veal. No, um, like appetizer, main course, dessert. So like crudite, sandwich, fruits, and cakes. I think it, now when I say it out loud, it sounds like a bad idea, but we're gonna, we're gonna uh, charge ahead. So, um, we're gonna make some different <laughs> shortcuts and then we will put them on our pineapple, I guess. I've also, like, all of these obviously have like meat and cheese and gluten bread in it and stuff, so I'm just like, substituting different stuff. Look at this bounty. Okay, let's begin. So it says, we start with bread. What, what size should we do first? I guess we should do a circle, because that's like the tester one, right? Okay, moment of truth. Oh, there we go. Oh my God. I feel accomplished. Where's the other cheese? Okay, this is gonna get messy. So I'm supposed to do bread, bologna, bologna, bologna. That's not gonna happen. I kind of, no bologna. So let's do white, orange, white, bread, <laughs> orange, white. Oh, I'm starting to lose my, my guys. And then do they put cheese? No, more bread on the bottom, of course. So now what I'm to do is to stick a toothpick in here, right? And then, <gasps> look at it. <laughs> this is important. Okay, it's way too big. That's the first thing. I think I should have had like longer cocktail toothpicks. But we'll just deal with that. More, more. What if it's all cheese? What if it's all cheese? Because it said to take cream cheese and put it between two slices of bologna. And then you have like a little Sammy, right? So I'm gonna try just doing cheese. This is like a soft cashew cheese. I'm gonna put it between two slices of cheese and make that into a sandwich. Okay. And then let's do some orange cheese, and then we're gonna, yes, it worked. Oh yeah. This is, shouldn't be this much fun. Okay, this one is a little bit smaller. <gasps> and it has a hole in the middle so you can stick the toothpick through. This is great. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I know you're like, I'm only seeing a base and a topping, Lauren. Where are the garnishes? We're gonna get to that. Also, what are we gonna do with all this cheese? We'll get to that. Let's do triangle. Triangle, triangle. So in my mind, the sandwiches are the main course. Right? And then I'm gonna have like a veggie beginner. A veggie beginner, a veggie starter. I mean, it means the same thing. Put those there and we'll garnish them after. Okay, we're gonna skip ahead. Have you ever had a dream? We're going to skip ahead to the crudités. Um, so it says to make Kebab, kebabs with shortcuts. Ooh, it says that you can use raw zucchini and eggplant, but I just don't know about all that. Uh, tasty combinations. However, kebabs made of all cucumber or all zucchini, for instance, are equally delicious. Serve with any of the following dips. So I guess we will make some crudite. I'm gonna make some dip. Okay, so cucumber one is kind of whack because it's almost the same size. Whatever. Um, I have some potatoes. Actually. 
like boiled potatoes. It's so weird. The potato is weird. It also said you can use beets. Okay, so we've got that and then I've got some pepper. I guess you have to like make it cuttable. Okay, oh, square, we never did square. Let's do square. Okay, it's a little bit, oh, it still works with the veggies, okay. It doesn't seem very sharp for like, pepper, but here we go. Okay, this one I'm gonna call like, is like a spacho one. Oh man, this isn't working. <laughs> okay, 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 that's enough for now. <laughs> Okay, see, this is like what I'm about, you know? Square cucumbers. Got our little plate, our little things. That's cute. Let's do potato. It said you can use canned potatoes. And I appreciate that. What if it's just all potato? I mean, give the people what they want, right? Oh, this? This is the appetizer I've created. It's just several square, oops. It's just several square potato. <laughs> Beautiful, oh boy. I'm getting hungry. This is supposed to be my dinner. Mm. When they're on the little sticks like this, they remind me of like Spanish tapas, like pinchos. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm gonna make some more veggie crudités and then we're gonna make the dip. I just feel that I've overcommitted myself at this point. I wanted to use this because I've been watching a lot of like BBC, um, like historical food and eating, specifically this series called Back in Time for Dinner, Back in Time for Tea, Further Back in Time, like all of this. It's just like shows um, a lot of domestic life and history, which to me is very interesting. Just like we hear so much about war and technology and all that. I think it's really interesting to hear how domesticity and home life has changed um, through history. So that's cool and also just got me in the I want to mess up around with some weird food, you know? Okay. Now we need to make a dip. Wait, I'm eating. <laughs> now we're gonna make a dip. I'm gonna make like a mini version of this dip. Okay, so I'm gonna make, there's this skinny dip, which has mayonnaise, honey, curry powder in it. A blue cheese dip, which I wish I could eat because I miss blue cheese, but we're gonna make the what a dilly dip. Um, so we need sour cream. Again, I'm like cutting the recipe provided in thirds because I uh, cannot eat two cups of mayonnaise based dip by myself. This is vegan sour cream. It's tofutty. Why am I holding it like this? It's the best one. It's because I'm passionate. And then you need mayonnaise. So, I know I just dipped the spoon in it. I'll fix it later. Okay, so we have that. And then Dijon mustard. I don't have that, so I'm not gonna add that. And scallions. Chop these scallions. I've been really into mustard lately, so I guess I just ate all the mustard. Green onions in. Got some nice dill here, I washed up. And it says to only put one and a half teaspoons of dill weed. I like dill. Whatever, Phyllis. Salt, pepper, and it needs some lemon juice. Ooh, it's a firm lemon, oh my God. So we just have to blend. Use one of these discards. Why did I say it like that? Mmm. 
you know what? I wanted to make this one because I was like, it's going to taste like potato salad with the potato ones. And I'm also obsessed with potato salad right now. Mmm. Yeah. One minute. I just have to try something. It's a smash hit, it's amazing. I'm gonna put this in the fridge so it can like mature. Clean up all this dill. Um, we will continue our adventure. Garnishes, there's a whole list of garnishes in here. Where is it? I got olives. Cause I like olives, but I got them with um, lemon in them instead of pimento because I thought it would be cute. Some possible garnishes. Even simple bread and cheese canapé becomes a special morsel when topped with an interesting garnish. These are my favorites. Cocktail Frank, classic. A tiny little sausage on top of this, incredible. Um, tiny pickle. Tiny meatball. What if you had a sand all cheese with a tiny meatball on it? That's so funny. Anyways, we have these olives which I should probably drain, but I won't. Okay, so, things are looking up. This looks ridiculous. Okay, let's get olives on these suckers. So I am anxiously awaiting. Popping these into a pineapple. Okay, so one of the other things it said that you could use was like radish. I don't have regular radish, but I do have pickled radish. I thought that could be kind of cute. Yeah, like curled. I'm going to move our vegetables into the fridge while we prepare our dessert. So we're gonna do some fruit and some cake, like petit fours. You know, I had to like bring the cake back in. We can use some plum. I thought plum would be nice because of the color. Um, got a little bit of peach here too. Peaches, they're a little soft for this type of thing. It says firm banana. Just prepare everything. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do these three fruits because I don't wanna cut into a bunch of stuff. Is that bad YouTubing? I don't know. Okay, triangle banana. Oh, that's weird. Okay, sure. Oh, I lost it. Come back. Okay, strawberry, strawberry, plum and banana. This sounds like baby food. Everyone's favorite soft foods. I feel like this deserves something crunchy. Oh, I forget the best part. So, I have a bunch of banana here. You're like, Lauren, that's obviously gonna turn brown. Also, I've noticed that you have a can of Sprite in front of you this whole time. Why? Because the genius Phyllis Gordon says to dip your fruits. She said to dip it in 7-Up, but I can't find 7-Up, so I got Sprite. Same thing. In here. Because if you dip it in, like, lemon juice or orange juice or something, it will impart its flavor. But this has citric acid in it um, that will coat the fruit without imparting its own flavor. Let's see if, how it works. I was just super excited about that. I don't know why. I just think it's silly. Okay. Just keep peaches and plums. That's fun together, right? And then you, they have, there's like recipes for different dips and stuff. So like you can dip your little fruit canapé. This is so time consuming. Imagine actually making these, because these are really tiny. This is awful. I was like, I love it. Love Phyllis. And now I'm like, mm. oh, I forgot to dip this into the 7-Up. That's key, the Sprite, whatever. Okay, and now that we've done that, we're gonna roll the fruit in coconut. Oh, I'm supposed to roll it in coconut. 
cute. This is the most 50s. I'm only gonna do some of it. Ooh, the banana will be good. Could look less weird. Okay, those are top notch. For the finale, I have cake, obviously. Um, these are just some leftovers. So here I have, I'm just gonna cut. Um, lemon turmeric cake. It's bright yellow, so I thought it would look really cute. So I'm just going to try this. Um, this is definitely one of the easier ones. Okay, that's too much cake, Lauren. Oh my God, it doesn't fit on the toothpick. Okay, oops, oh no. Okay. The other cake I have is a red velvet because I think it'll look nice. It's really thick cake though. I would almost like cut it into thinner pieces. Okay, so I made this weird, <laughs> doesn't look very nice. It's like a boiled icing. I'm gonna add some food coloring to it to make it pink. Um, I put some maraschino cherry juice in it. This is like very old fashioned, like Victorian style frosting that is foiled. Wow, that is very pink. Okay, do some dipping. And then it's just supposed to. <laughs> there we go. Let's do another one. Oh, that's falling right apart. It's a very wet icing. I'm gonna roll it in coconut for uh, reasons. This icing, I think I did not make it correctly because it is crispy and gooey and no bueno. Luckily, I have garnish. <laughs> All better. <laughs> These will look really nice on the coconut ones, right? A little maraschino cherry. It would be better if they were small. Sure, I'll give you that, but that's fun. All right, the time has come to assemble. So we're gonna do the centerpiece. Let's do it. Try using different fruits and vegetables to hold the appetizers such as eggplant, grapefruit, melon, pineapple, pumpkin, so this is the part I was going to get to before we wrap it up. You will have leftover ingredients from your shortcuts. Put the meat scraps in a blender with a bit of mustard. You will have a delicious spread for crackers. Oh, and then it says that for big parties to just make some sandwiches and use the shortcuts on it, which um, now that I see that, I wish I had done that. So let's, let's do this. Our pineapple. So I, initially I was going to go from like appetizer to dessert, but then I realized that that would mean there were olives dripping onto cake, and that's not our scene. So we're gonna do one side savory and one side sweet. Start from the bottom because it'll be a lot easier. Okay. Ugh, square fruits. This is, wow. Okay. I know you wish you could come over. The sweet side is complete. Dessert first, as it should be. Now we have our luncheon side. I forgot that I made one that is just potatoes. Oh, the olives are getting dangerously close to the cake, but that's okay. I'm kind of obsessed with this. Okay, I would do this for hours just because it's a good gag. People come over, you have this out. This one is all busted, so I'm gonna do this as a taster. Um, we have our dip. Unfortunately, I don't have a cabbage. Mmm. Oh, I put a lot of dill in there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I forgot. I didn't have jelly beans, so I got Swedish berries to put on some of these. Oh, yeah. Where do they sell jelly beans? I couldn't find them in the candy aisle. And there you have it. Let's put it on something that spins. Oh, she's heavy. A three course canapé pineapple. 
La, la, la. We have fruits, petit fours, cakes, vegetable crudités, pate sandwiches, bread and vegan cheese. It's all gluten-free vegan <laughs> cannabis. Uh, I'm proud. Well, I guess this is where it ends. I want to eat one of the pate sandwiches, but we should take a picture first. I hope you make this. <laughs> You can find more Phyllis Gordon shortcuts if you want your own on eBay or Etsy. Why wouldn't you? Thanks for watching. I'm Lauren. Don't forget to like, subscribe, dingling the bell. Hey, um, I don't know when this video is coming out, but I hit a thousand subscribers. It's amazing. I'm so grateful. So um, keep up subscribing. Keep keeping up your part of the deal and I'll keep up my part of the deal. Okay.